Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz HMC Power Supplies. This presentation explains how to configure and use the different features of the HMC series power supplies, including both basic and advanced functions. The HMC series of compact benchtop power supplies are available in either one, two, or three channel models. Maximum power per channel is 100 watts, with each channel providing up to 32 volts and 10, 5, or 3 amps depending on the number of channels. Some of the more important features of the HMC include ramp or arbitrary voltages, statistics and logging, and remote sensing, all of which will also be covered in this presentation. The HMC also has advanced protection functions for avoiding dangerous output conditions, and it supports remote control via USB, Ethernet, or GPIB. We'll be using a two-port supply, the 8042, in this presentation, but the features and operating modes are essentially identical for all three models. The HMC has both front and rear connectors for supplying voltage. On the front panel, standard banana plug connectors are used. The rear of the unit accepts a terminal block for attaching wires. In addition to supplying voltage, some of these wires can also be used for sense connections, something we'll discuss later in this presentation. The HMC outputs are both floating and galvanically isolated, which means it's possible to connect channel outputs in series or in parallel. By connecting the outputs in series, the HMC can provide higher voltages. And, by connecting them in parallel, higher currents are possible. For example, we could combine three 32-volt channels in series in order to get an output voltage of 96 volts. Or, we could combine three 3-amp three channels in parallel for a combined output current of up to 9 amps. Once connections are made, we enter values for voltage and or current and then enable output. First, we select the channel and then choose voltage or current from the menu. Values can be changed in two ways. One is by using the rotary knob in the cursors. Alternatively, numeric values can be entered directly by pressing the shift key, which enables the numeric keypad. To confirm the entered values, either press the rotary knob or use the back key. Channels can be enabled or disabled on an individual basis using the corresponding channel on and off key. The final step is activating the output for the enabled channels, which is done using the master on and off key. The values of voltage and current for a given channel can also be changed while the output is active or on. This is called live mode. To enter live mode, press and hold or long push the rotary knob. The up, down, and left, right cursor keys are illuminated while the HMC is in live mode. The HMC displays the output voltage, output current, and output power updated in real time. For a selected channel, history information in the form of max, min, and average values of voltage and current can also be displayed. The color of the displayed values indicates the operating mode for each channel. Yellow is used in editing mode, that is, when the output is disabled. Values in green indicate that the channel is operating in constant voltage mode, and values in red indicate constant current mode. Let's stop for a minute to explain what we mean by constant voltage and constant current. Normally, the user of a power supply configures a fixed output voltage. In this case, the output current depends on the load resistance, as per Ohm's law. This is called constant voltage mode, because the supply will hold the voltage constant even if the load resistance, and therefore the current, change. Note that if the load resistance decreases, the amount of current supplied will increase. A large drop in load resistance could therefore lead to a current that's high enough to cause damage. One solution to this problem is an electronic fuse that turns power off when maximum current is reached. Instead of disabling the output entirely, another solution is to limit the current to a maximum value by decreasing the output voltage. In this case, the supply is said to be operating in constant current mode. Whether a power supply operates in constant voltage or constant current mode is determined by the user-specified output current limit. There's no button or menu item to toggle between these two modes. Now let's look at an example of this on the HMC. We configure the output voltage to be 2 volts and enter a current value or limit of 400 milliamps. After enabling the output, the HMC will hold the output voltage steady or constant at 2 volts, even if the current changes, as long as the current remains below the configured current threshold of 400 milliamps. Since we're in constant voltage mode, the values of voltage, current, and power 
are all displayed in green, and a small CV indicator is displayed in the voltage pane. Now let's decrease the current value from 400 milliamps to 300 milliamps. The output voltage still starts at 2 volts and remains constant when output current changes, but only as long as the limit of 300 milliamps is not exceeded. If, however, more than 300 milliamps would be drawn, the HMC automatically switches to constant current mode, lowering the output voltage until the output current does not exceed the configured current limit. When operating in constant current mode, values of power, voltage, and current are displayed in red, and a small CC is displayed in the voltage pane. Although power supplies are usually operated in constant voltage mode so as to provide a fixed voltage, there are cases where we may want to have an output voltage that dynamically changes based on a user configured pattern or sequence. The HMC supports two different functions for dynamically changing the output voltage, namely Easy Ramp and Easy ARB. Let's take a closer look at these. As the name implies, Easy Ramp is used to create a continuous rise or ramp in the output voltage. On the HMC, Easy Ramp can be activated separately on each channel. The output voltage starts at zero and then rises to a defined voltage over a ramping time from 10 milliseconds to 10 seconds, after which it remains constant. To configure Easy Ramp on the HMC, first configure the final or target output voltage as usual, then press Advanced and choose Ramp. Note that Easy Ramp is enabled on a per channel basis. Next, enter the ramping time. Use the hard keys to enable the channel using Channel On Off, and then start the ramp with Master On Off. Unlike Easy Ramp, which linearly increases the voltage from zero to a defined value, Easy ARB switches the HMC output between different discrete voltage levels or current thresholds. Each one of these levels has a user defined value and duration, and the sequence can be repeated multiple times. To configure Easy ARB on the HMC, press the advanced hard key and then choose Easy ARB. Easy ARB is configured and activated per channel, and can be run on multiple channels simultaneously. The next step in configuring Easy ARB is defining the ARB states, which is done by pressing Edit. Easy ARB uses a table containing values of voltage, current, and time. You can also choose whether to interpolate between the values. The number of states is defined using endpoint. In this example, there are three lines in the table. Index is used to select which line to edit, with the cursor keys being used to move between the values in each line. Repetition is the number of times the table will be repeated, and end behavior defines what happens at the end of the Easy ARB sequence. Either turn the voltage off, or hold at the last level. Easy ARB tables can also be saved and loaded, which is particularly useful when files are created externally. Easy ARB files are stored as CSV or comma separated value files, containing values for index, voltage, current, time, and interpolation. We've already seen how these files can be created and viewed directly on the HMC, but they can also be created or edited externally using an arbitrary editor. Another convenient method of creating and editing Easy ARB files is using the free HME Explorer software, which can be downloaded from the Rodian Schwartz website. After defining the sequence, the next question is how it should be sent, and this is defined by the triggered parameter. When set to off, the entire sequence is sent as soon as the channel is on, and master on off is enabled. If triggered is set to on, then behavior is controlled by the trigger mode. In this mode, the trigger key on the front panel is illuminated. If set to run, the entire sequence is played out when the trigger key is pressed. If the trigger mode is set to single, each time the trigger button is pressed, it advances the waveform to the next line in the table. Now let's talk about protection functions on the HMC. The first three of these, over voltage protection, over power protection, and over current protection, are user configurable and will be described on the next slides. There's also an over temperature protection function that protects the supply from excessive heat. If any of these protection limits is reached, a red indicator flashes on the HMC display and a beep is sounded. Note that multiple protection functions can be active simultaneously. To configure over voltage and over power protection, press the advanced menu hard key and then choose OVP or OPP. Note that these are configured and activated on a per channel basis. In both cases, the user specifies the voltage or power limit. 
In the case of over voltage protection, there are two modes. Measured will disable the output if the measured value is above the limit, whereas protected disables output if the user tries to configure a value above the limit. Since power can't be directly configured by the user, OPP simply disables the channel when the measured power level is exceeded. Overcurrent protection is provided in the form of an electronic fuse that protects against high currents. Like overvoltage and overpower protection, these are configured per channel. To configure fuses, first enter the current value as usual, and then press Advanced Fuse to specify the delay between when the fuse is tripped and when the output is disabled. Once a fuse is configured and activated, a fuse icon appears in the channel display. Fuses can also be linked together, meaning that if the fuse is tripped on one channel, both channels are disabled. In this case, a linked fuse icon appears. If a fuse is activated or tripped, that is, if the configured current is exceeded, then output is disabled, and a red fuse indicator is shown on the display. In this case, output must be manually re-enabled. In the case of linked channels, as shown here, both the main, as well as any linked channels, are affected, and must separately be re-enabled. Now that we've covered the basic functions of the HMC, let's look at some of the more advanced functions. These include tracking, remote sense, data logging, and remote interfacing or control. On multi-channel HMC models, the channels can be linked or tracked. Tracking means that changes made to voltage or current on one channel are applied to the other channels. To configure tracking, press the Track Hard key, select the hard key for the track channel, and then select Voltage or Current. The yellow box in both channels shows the values that are being tracked, and changing the value in one channel automatically changes the other channel by the same amount. Note that although voltage or current will change by the same amount, the absolute values may be different in each channel. The next topic is remote sense. The cables connected to a power supply's outputs have resistance, and this will cause a voltage drop between the power supply and the load. In many cases, however, this very small drop can be ignored, but it can become significant with high currents or small load resistances. Remote Sense is a method used to monitor and compensate for the voltage drop in the supply leads. In Remote Sense, two leads carry the current as normal, but two additional Sense leads are used to measure the voltage at the load. Because these Sense leads are connected to a very high impedance in the power supply, there's almost no current flow in these leads, and therefore almost no voltage drop. Based on the readings made using these Sense leads, the supply can adjust the output to obtain the desired voltage at the load. Multi-channel HMC models have sense connectors in the terminal block on the rear panel, and single-channel models have the sense connections on the front. No configuration is required when using sense leads. The HMC automatically detects when sense lines are attached, and sense appears in the main display whenever remote sensing is being used. Another helpful function on the HMC is its ability to log data. More specifically, current and voltage can be logged in CSV format. To configure logging, press the Measure Hard key and then select Logging. The logging interval, log value count, or logging duration are configured here. Log data is stored internally or to USB with a user-defined file name. Logging can be start or stopped manually or by means of the Trigger Hard key. The HMC can be remotely controlled over USB, LAN, and GPIB interfaces. These remote interfaces enable programmatic control, that is, they allow you to both configure and read values from the HMC using standardized commands. Remote interfaces are configured by pressing the Setup Hard key and then Interface. Note that two methods of USB connection are supported, Virtual COM ports and the Test and Measurement class. Please see the HMC Programmer's Guide for more information and a complete set of supported commands. Let's end with a brief summary. The Rodian Schwartz HMC is a family of compact benchtop power supplies that are available with one, two, or three independent outputs. The HMC is easily configured using the front panel, but can also be remotely controlled. Other important features covered in this presentation include Easy Ramp and Easy Arb, a variety of protection functions, channel tracking, remote sense, and data logging. This concludes our presentation, Getting Started with Rodian Schwartz HMC Power Supplies. If you'd like to learn more about the HMC or power supplies in general, 
please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.